Dodge City and in the territory out west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Wagons filled with kids. Well, how'd you know Lang could bring the kids along? <laughs> well, he always does. Oh. But, uh, John hey, look, there's the filter, boy. Pardon. And way down there is Emma Cole. <laughs> is Ain't seen her in town for a spell either. Not in the area. Respectfully, Matt Dillon. U.S. Marshal. Does it? <clears throat> Chester. Yes, sir? Will you shut the door? You're letting in all the flies in Kansas. But, Mr. Dillon, I can't see Shut the door, anywhere. Chester. You can go out or stay in, but shut the door. Yes, sir. No, well, Mr. Dillon, this town's just busting with people. All here for the races tomorrow, I guess. Yeah. You going out to the flats tomorrow? I don't know, Chester. Well, you don't sound like you hanker after going too much. Well, I don't. I wish Colonel Benson's officers would forget about horse racing. <laughs> well, I guess they figure their army grades are about the best horses in the country. Well, everybody knows the cavalry has good horses. They don't have to prove it every four or five months. Well, Mr. Dillon, I just plain don't understand. Ain't nobody likes a horse race better than you. <sighs> I know, Chester. I like them fine, but that's not... Marshal Dillon? Yeah, that's right. Lieutenant Flagg, sir, Fort Dodge. Oh, well, sit down, Lieutenant. Colonel Benson's compliments, sir. And he requests your presence at the fort tomorrow. For the races. That's right, sir. The colonel feels that a peace officer out there would be, uh, well, a steadying influence. I see. And uh, I take it you don't. No, Marshal, I don't. We can police our own activities. I see. After all, we're certainly competent to handle a bunch of sodbusters. Well, the last time there were races out at the fort, three men were shot. Is that how you would handle things, Lieutenant? I wasn't stationed at Fort Dodge then, Marshal. But I know this. If people around here want to bet their stock against Army Mouse, they shouldn't complain if they lose. Mm-hmm. Uh, how long have you been out here, Lieutenant? I was stationed in Virginia until two months ago. Yeah, I thought so. What do you mean? Look, Lieutenant, out here, when men have something to complain about, they sometimes do it with a six-gun. They don't all have the respect for the army that you have. They would if I had the say of it. Oh, maybe, but uh, you don't. It's like with the Indians. A lot of the junior officers feel as I do. We'd go after them, force them into the open. And bring on another Indian war? And we'd beat them. But it would cost more than you'd believe, Lieutenant. <laughs> Not if the three I saw leaving Dodge a while back were any example. An old man on a shaggy gray pony and two young boys. That was a Kiowa, Lieutenant. He's a chief, and those two braves are his sons. His name's Howling Dog. You seem to know a good deal about Indians, Marshal. <clears throat> Lieutenant Flagg, 
You're a young officer. You're ambitious and you're eager, but uh, you talk too much, and you don't even know part of what you're talking about. Now, look here. Tell Colonel Benson I'll be out there tomorrow. Very good, Marshal. And Lieutenant. Yes? I've known Howland Dog ever since I came to Kansas. He's old, but he isn't stupid. So, uh, don't guess wrong about him. His pa sure must have hated the world, Mr. Dillon. Ah, oh, he's young, Chester. He'll learn. Yes, sir. But you know, sometimes fellas grow up and don't improve a bit. Oh, there you are. Well, hello, Matt. Chester. How are you, Doc? I, uh, passed a young lieutenant on the way out. Is, uh, Chester enlisting in the Army, Matt? Oh, just oh the my gracious, Doc. What's on your mind, Doc? Oh, well, just thought you should know. I won't be around town tomorrow. I'm taking the day off. Oh, is that so? Yep, I'm going out to the fort for the races. Might even work up some business. Thought you was taking the day off. <clears throat> Chester. <clears throat> you see, Matt, that fella Hunter out there, regimental surgeon, you know? Yeah? Well, he thinks he's the only good doctor around these parts. Well, ain't he? He... Uh, Oh, well. Uh, now, Matt, if you were going to be out there, you might push a little practice my way. The last time, a hunter got six cases out of seven. The only man you let me have was dead. Well, look, Doc, I'll tell you, if Lieutenant Flagg was running things, maybe we could arrange a whole massacre for you. Well, who's Lieutenant Flagg? The lieutenant you singing leaving. Yeah, hey, Colonel Benson sent him in, Doc. <laughs> Seems I've got an official invitation just to make sure the civilian element don't get to shooting each other. Oh, now, Matt, you don't think they'd do that again, do you? No, Doc. If there's any trouble out there this time, it won't be the townspeople that started. It'll be Lieutenant Flagg and his crowd. Oh, that's so? Well, how's that, Matt? Well, he's got no use for anything but army. And he'd just as soon shoot an Indian as see one. Well? Howland Dog's in this part of the country again, Doc. Oh? And I wouldn't be too surprised but what he shows up at the races tomorrow. You'd think this was the first horse race ever run, Matt. Yeah. Seems like the betting's running high. Just talking to the Pilcher boys. They're betting everything they own on a Missouri mare they brought out here. Well, I've seen her, Chester. She's a good mare. Oh, I've never heard so much horse talk in my life as I have tonight. Pastern, stifles, gaskins, four quarters, hind quarters, short couples, long barrels. <laughs> well, I tell you, Matt, it kind of makes a girl wonder. Well, oh, don't you worry, Kitty. There'll be other nights. Well, there better be. And that... Look there, coming in the door. What? Oh, it's that Lieutenant Flag and some other officers. Yeah, they're down here to fan the fire, I guess. What do you mean? Now, the more they get this crowd worked up, the higher the betting will be. Oh, jinkies, I wish I had some money to bet. I'll just be glad you haven't, Chester. Good evening, Marshal. Lieutenant Flag, uh, Miss Russell. How do you do? Miss Russell, Lieutenants Dryden, Lawson, Mao. How, How do you do? do? Uh, well, gentlemen, is anyone drinking? I think we all are. Bartender, let out some glasses. You'll join us, won't you, Miss Russell? Oh, well, thank you, Lieutenant. You too, Marshal? Well, I... I think uh... I'll just walk down to the other end of the bar, Mr. Dillon. It's crowded here. Hey, you, uh, fellas from Fort Dodge, ain't you? That's right. You own some of them army greys that are going to run tomorrow? We do. Hey, well, my name's Pilcher, Cy Pilcher. I got some money to bet on my mare. I'll match her any way you say. Well, I'll take your bet, Mr. Pilcher. Name it. Uh, gentlemen. $500 dollars silver. Run three, four, five hundred yards. That's a lot of money. You mean you ain't got it? I'll go with you, Flag. All right, it's a bet then. Good. I'll see you tomorrow then. Up the fort. Well, gentlemen. <laughs> Easy as taking a... a pig. That fellow wouldn't know a horse from a Missouri mule. Maybe that's what he's got. From his looks, he could be running himself. <laughs> All right, hold it, Pilcher. There ain't no man can name me like that. Hold it, I said. You, wearing a uniform, calling yourself a soldier. I was fought outside of Atlanta while you were still nursing. Listen, you... All right. Now, that's enough. Now, Pilcher, you get down to the other end of the bar. This is for you, gentlemen. You better start back for the fort. Now, look, Marshal, we don't have to Move. take it. Move. 
All of you. Come on, Flag. Let's go. Well, at least they paid for the bottle before you ran them off. You want a drink? No, Kitty, not for me. Thank you. You, you go ahead. Uh, look, Matt. You can't stop trouble every time before it starts. No, I can't, Kitty. But I wish tomorrow was done with. We will return for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first, three burglars lucky at theft prove unlucky at gambling. To make matters worse... Authorities catch up with them on their theft rap as well in the case of the cold dice on Gangbusters later tonight. Hear how Lady Luck refused to smile at a gang of free and easy crooks and how justice and the cops closed in on their escapades. Hear Gangbusters, presented by CBS Radio, later tonight on most of these stations. Now the second act of Gunsmoke. Yet. The whiskey isn't gone, though, and there's still a race to come. Flag's been holding it off. Yes, sir. Well, at least here on the finish line, we can see which way the money's going. Matt! Oh, Matt! Oh, hello, Doc. Well, we haven't seen you all afternoon, Doctor. Where have you been? Oh, well, just playing pinochle with some of the boys. Things have been dull, but uh, they won't be in a minute. No, why? Flag and Pilcher are down there at the start now. You see them? The big race is due any minute. Yeah, uh... Chester. Yes, sir? You keep your eyes open. And as soon as they cross the finish line, you get to Pilcher and I'll pick up Flag. All right, sir. Yeah, let's see. Any minute now. Any minute they'll be out. Here they come. Get moving, Chester. I'll find Flag. Yes, sir. All right. Pardon me, will you? Will you? Excuse me, please. Yeah. Will you pardon me, please? Walk that horse good, Sergeant. Hello, Lieutenant. You got a fast horse there. Fastest on the post. Yeah. And the Pilcher boys lost about everything they had just now. You preaching at me, Marshal? No, Lieutenant. I've seen horse races before. Yeah, he won easy, Marshal. I guess he did, Lieutenant Mowell. And he could have won from any other horse just as easy. Maybe. Well, Flag, you beat my mare. Thought maybe I might have won, but you got a good horse. Real good horse. You getting ready to talk me out of my money? You're not much of a man, but you got a good mouth, and I'm paying you. Here. Five hundred dollars silver. Come on, Tom. Let's go home. Well, Marshal, the races are over. The army won, and no trouble. You sorry? I got no complaints, Lieutenant Flag. Looks like the colonel was worried about nothing. Thinking there might be some hotheads out here. Matter of fact, I was kind of hoping for some fun along with the running. Maybe you are a steadying influence, Marshal. Now, you look here, young fella. Soldier uh, boy. Chester, no soldier. take it easy. Hey, Flag. Look over there. Well, if it isn't that old Kyle, a howling dog. <laughs> well, you want some fun? Hey, why not? Flag. Just going to challenge him to a race, Marshal? He's an old man, Lieutenant. Come on, Mal. We'll go talk to him. What are you going to do, Mr. Dillon? Uh, we'll go over, too. Flag's feeling mighty big right now and looking for trouble. All right, sir. Well, it looked to me like folks was all leaving a minute ago. Now they seem to be drifting back. Yeah. 
What do you think old Howling Dog's going to do? I don't know, Chester. Mrs. Lieutenant Mao. I know, Army officers. You speak good English for an Indian. I am chief of tribe. Chief? I hear you Kiowa ride good horses. Yeah. Horses help us hunt. And I hear they're fast. Now, you've been sitting here all afternoon. You saw the races. Yeah, I saw. You saw my horse run. You think any of your horses could beat him? Yes. Which one, Howling Dog? Your son's horses or the one you're riding? Anyone. <laughs> Any one of these three? <laughs> Here's one of them could run 400 yards and live. <laughs> All right. All right, now stop deviling him, Flag. I'm not doing anything, Marshal. He tells me his horses can beat mine. I don't think they can. If you want a race, set one up, but don't fun him. Will you race my horse, Howling Dog? I will race. Which horse? The one I ride. <laughs> hey, Flag, you ever see a sorrier sheep? <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> you want to bet on the race, Howling Dog? Kiowa got no money. Well, you must have something. If I lose, I give you a horse. I <laughs> wouldn't want it. But I'll take that little beaded sack you're wearing around your neck. Yeah, that Indian medicine. You say you could beat me, so there's nothing to worry about. If I lose, I give army man medicine sack. Good. Well, I'll get Sergeant Crockett to bring my horse over here, will you? I'll be right back. Now, Howling Dog, what distance do we race? You say. All right. We'll race from here down to that wagon with a broken wheel and back again. That's about 500 yards. Marshal, you can mark the start and finish. All right. Now, Howland Dog, do you understand? From here to the wagon and then back again. The first man to pass me coming back wins. Yeah. Here you are, Flag. Had a chance to blow. Good shape. Good. Uh, Lieutenant Mao, would you step over here a minute? I'd like to talk to you. Sure, Martin. You ready, Chief? I am ready. <laughs> you can ride dressed like that? Yes. Okay, Marshal. Fine with me. <laughs> hey, Flag. That Indian gonna ride in his blanket? You can ride in a tent for all I care. <laughs> uh, army man. Yes? What you give me when I win? When you... <laughs> what do you want? Money? No. What then? Uniform. You... You mean what I'm wearing? Yes. Well... Oh, why not, Flag? What difference does it make? <laughs> he won't win anyway. All right. It's a bet, Chief. Uh, just a minute, Lieutenant. What is it, Pelcher? Well, my horse couldn't do it. Maybe the Chief's can. I ain't got any money left, but I'll bet my saddles and wagon and four mules against 500 to bet. All right, Chester. Yes, sir. Hey, you hold the money, huh? Yes, sir. And I might just take about $5 on the Indian, too, Lieutenant. It's a bet. Anybody else? Anybody want to cover me? I've done all right today. I'll take 100 You're a fool, but well, it's a bet. As soon as I'm mounted, I'll be ready, Martin. All right. You ready, Howling Dog? Ready. All right, now, to that wagon and back across this line, then. Uh, you there, would you ride down and clear those people out of the way, please? All right, move up on the line. Now, I'll fire one shot. All right, steady now. I don't know, Chester. Looks like Flag's ahead. Now he's swinging wide for the wagon. Look in there. That ugly little pony can sure run. Yeah. Well, they're into the turn, Chester. Hey, Mr. Dillon, what happened? 
Well, look, Howler Dog dropped his blanket. Well, he's naked as a jaybird. <laughs> Come on, you Indian, ride! Come on, Howler Dog! Come on! He's doing it, Chester! He's doing it! He's doing it! as a man in long jobs. <laughs> you know, I imagine Lieutenant Flagg will have some explaining to do when Colonel Benson sees him. Oh, there. I wish I'd been there. Oh, my, oh, my. Oh, no place for a lady, Kitty. <laughs> you know, Holler Dog just sat there while Flagg cursed and begged, but then when the lieutenant paid off, he just turned and rode away. <laughs> With most of the lieutenant's uniform draped around his shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Mr. Dillon, he sure seemed pretty calm about it all. Well, he was sure enough of his horse, just... <laughs> sure he'd win, you mean? Well, sure, that's right. Well, why, Matt? Army horse is a pretty good stock. Well, sure they are, Kenny, but there's always one around somewhere that's better, and Holland Dog has it. <laughs> well, if that horse is so good, Matt, why doesn't Holland Dog uh, clip him up some so he, he don't look like a goat? Doc, let me tell you something. <laughs> Howland Dog's been winning races with that horse for a long time now. He's been to half the army posts on the frontier. What? He has? Well, <laughs> That's right. Well, why don't people learn not to bet against him then? Well, Chester, because lots of them are like Lieutenant Flagg. they got to make fun of somebody that looks weaker or different than they do. Yeah. Well, now, Matt, you said you knew about this before. Yeah. Did you know old Howling Dog was going to win today out there? <laughs> well, Doc... I was just sure enough to win a $50 bet from Lieutenant Mowell. <laughs> Sam, <laughs> see what the gentleman will have. <laughs> Gunsmoke, transcribed under the direction of Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Mr. McDonald, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Harry Bartell, Ralph Moody, Paul Savage, and John Daner. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Gunsmoke has been selected by the Armed Forces Radio Service to be heard by our troops overseas. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Tomorrow night, motion picture star Van Heflin plays Damon Runyon on the Radio Hall of Fame. Novelist Gene Fowler and Lionel Barrymore, both friends of the late Damon Runyon, take part in the dramatized tribute. Remember, over CBS Radio tomorrow night, listen to a tribute to the beloved writer of short stories. It's on the Radio Hall of Fame on most of these stations of the star's address. George Walsh speaking. Coming, going, staying at home, enjoy music and song on a Sunday afternoon on the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>